Hey everybody on YouTube, Carl Alexander here, and in today's video, I'm gonna do a quick tutorial on how to overclock an i5-7600K on the MSI Z270 SLI Plus motherboard. Now this video was requested from a commenter, so I'm not sure how much detail to go into, but I'll try to make this quick while throwing in some useful information as we go. First up, we need to turn on the computer and hit the delete key to gain access to MSI's Click BIOS. While this video is specifically about the SLI Plus, it should be very close to any other MSI Click BIOS board. Okay, so if you follow my cursor here, in the top left corner we have the OC Genie. Essentially this is an automatic overclock from the board manufacturer, and while it does work, it doesn't provide very optimized settings. And in this board's case, the voltage is pretty high for the 4.5 GHz overclock it provides. I suggest skipping this, but if you're really uncomfortable with overclocking, I suppose it's a nice feature and takes out all the guesswork. Next up where the cursor is now is XMP, or Extreme Memory Profile. This is an Intel technology introduced a few years ago to provide a simple one-click overclock to compatible RAM. The RAM I have right now defaults to 2166, but with XMP we get an automated boost to 3200 MHz. There is really no reason I know of not to enable XMP, so go ahead and click that. Now that we've got those out of the way, let's jump straight into the overclock. The overclock settings are in the middle on the left side of the screen. Hit that button and you'll be greeted with a long list of options. We will be doing a very simple CPU ratio, CPU voltage overclock, so we won't be touching most of the settings. If you're unfamiliar, the CPU ratio, or multiplier, is a number that is applied to the CPU's base clock, which in this case is 100 MHz. So for our stock speed of 3.8 GHz, we have a multiplier of 38. So 38 times 100 MHz equals 3800 MHz, or 3.8 GHz. In our overclock today, we're going for a 4.8 GHz overclock. Generally, you wouldn't want to start this high, but I've already done the initial legwork here. So we simply click on the CPU ratio and type in 48. A change box will appear and we can now move on to the CPU core voltage. In this case, we will be applying 1.3 volts to the CPU. We click this box here, apply the number, and we are done. Hit the X in the top right corner and reset the machine. That in a nutshell is how you apply a simple overclock to the MSI Click BIOS 5. An important side note here is that this was a demonstration and not what you should start with if you're new to overclocking. Here's a graph of example voltages in OnTech used in their overclocking. I would suggest looking through these and starting at the low ones just to see what works on your CPU. Now from here, you'll need to test the stability of the overclock, and I use RealBench as my stress test. While the stress test is running, you should also be keeping a close eye on your CPU temperatures with something like Hardware Monitor. The thermal junction of the 7600K is 100 Celsius, so keeping your CPU below 80 is best, but having a few spikes into the low 80s won't do any serious damage. Of course, over time, temps like 80C can cause CPU degradation, so many seem to recommend aiming for closer to the mid-70s. Before I get to the clock rate or voltage I want, I generally run 15 to 30 minute quick stress tests just to get a good sense of what the stability and temps are like. After you find what you want in clock rate and voltage, you should run a long-term stability test for several hours, and preferably overnight to make sure you won't run into any unexpected issues. Now that we have a good overclock, we can actually save it in the Click BIOS. After booting back into the BIOS, you just hit the OC Profile button in the top right, pick a spot for your profile, give it a name, and hit Save. Then, if you want to experiment further, you will have a saved, stable overclock you can load from in the future. And one last thing to remember in any overclock is the simple idea of voltage, clock rate, and heat. If you want a higher clock rate, you will probably need more voltage, but more voltage creates more heat, causing possible high and unsafe temps. However, not enough voltage in your overclock will be unstable, so the key to it all is keeping your voltage as low as you can while maintaining a stable overclock. If you remember that and stay within safe voltage limits, you'll do just fine. Okay everybody, I think that's about it for this video. I'm sorry if it wasn't in-depth enough, but the more nuanced stuff about overclocking is a bit out of my league. Maybe in the future when I've learned more, I can revisit the subject, but for now, this will have to do. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, I think you know what to do. If you have any comments, leave them down in the comments section. And as always, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button to see more videos like this one in the future. Coming up soon, I still have a video about RAM speed performance and gaming planned, so be looking out for that one. If you want to get in touch with me directly or see what I'm working on, 
Follow me on Twitter. And as always, thanks for watching.